I noticed that every time I watch Menards TV, it's been like fake pranks. And I really don't know who they are as people and how they are as a couple. So I'm gonna watch this video. Shout out to the Maynards. They left a comment on a reaction that I made on them and they gave me their full support. So I appreciate YouTubers like you, those who understand what reactors are for. <laughs> but listen, I wanna get to know y'all a little bit better. So let's get to this video because it says we're ready to have a baby. Hold up, you're answering some questions. So let's just watch the video. Y'all ready? Let's get it. So tonight we are going to just chop it up with you guys. Just have some conversation. Let's talk. You guys have some questions and we're going to ask them. Okay, we want answers. And as always, we got these questions from Instagram. First question. How do you guys face trolls about your marriage and still remain strong and positive? Mm. Oh my God. The, the trolls. trolls be trolling, <laughs> They bro. do be trolling out there. The trolls do be trolling. They do. I'm not going to lie. But that's okay. <laughs> so let me tell you the difference between a troll and an actual person who dislikes you, okay? Trolls just instigate shit. They could actually very down low like you, but they just want drama. So they just drop little comments here and there to get people talking. And it's terrible because these are people who ain't got no lives, you know what I'm saying? So they're trying to create one so they can watch it unfold. So them trolls are worse than the haters, trust me. It comes, it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. It does. And what did Kanye say? If they don't say nothing, I'll be worried. Like, I'll be worried if they ain't say nothing. Like, yeah, yeah. literally. And like, what did Cat Williams say? Cat Williams said, if you ain't got no haters, you need to figure out how to get somebody <laughs> someone, you feel me? <laughs> no, and that's real. Yeah. And all jokes aside, that's real, you know what I mean? Like, coming into this, to this game here, this is something that we had to learn very early on with the negative comments. For and even a fact. though, like, our audience and our true supporters, they ride for us, they rock with us, and you guys are very, very positive and we feel like you guys are a reflection and they're louder than the, the the trolls that's another thing the love is louder than the hate you know what i mean the hate just stings but you're i think doing it's something wrong if you don't have haters you're like, doing something very wrong that's you... what i'm saying like fuck the trolls let's talk about the haters now good publicity is good publicity bad publicity is good publicity whichever way it goes they're talking about you right whether you're a hater a lover a viewer or just a reactor okay if we talking about you, it's a good thing. That's what I keep telling these YouTubers, Maynards, but they ain't listening. You gotta explain it to them. Not you're not you're not on your way to where you wanna be if you don't have people trying to take you down. Trying to take you down, trying to hate on you, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So I think all in all, it's about knowing who you are as a person mm -hmm. and being true to that. If you know exactly who you are as a person, can't nobody knock you off exactly. your Exactly. Can't nothing nobody say knock you off your grind. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, Life is all about perception. You might not rock what we doing, what we doing, and that's cool. You feel me? So we just really don't let it bother us. We don't you give it, you can't the energy, allow it. Yes. You can't allow you it. give it the energy. That's when it got you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I if y'all know my history, I learned it early on as well. That's why I am able to be on YouTube and to take all the heat and to take all the negativity that I get in my comments or from other YouTubers because it's part of the game. This is YouTube, okay? I know me putting myself out there, I'm gonna get some negative feedback and that's okay. If you built for this, you built for it. If you're not, get the fuck out the kitchen. It might Actually, be too hot for way you. Way too precious yeah. to be giving it to somebody who doesn't like us. Exactly. And the thing is, haters low-key love you. They that's love you. the thing. It don't affect us though. Yeah. Like, at all like that's the last thing and you shouldn't you allow it about. to affect yeah. you yeah. we don't think about it so yeah that's yeah. that but we all are human and if you heard her say it might sting a little it's because it's true there might be some things that you may be insecure about and someone in the comments points it out it's gonna sting but you have to remember that this this person they don't even have a face to them they know nothing about you they only see your videos and you know nothing about them so why let a person who doesn't even know you affect your life? So you have to, just have to constantly remind yourself every time you read a negative comment. Next question is, do you guys plan to have an official wedding? If so, where would you have, where would the destination be? I'm gonna let you take this one, my baby. Wait, are you guys not married? I used to want to make it like a huge big wedding, but I think the way we got married was perfect mm -hmm. because I'm seeing people spend so much money on a wedding just for other people and it's not yep. really for you you've got to feed hundreds of mouths 
to fly people out x y and z like Preach if it. we were going to do it again mm. if we if we do it again yeah i think it would be very small very intimate mm -hmm. and that's that because i mean we have a very small circle like as in it's just this like, yeah. yes let me explain. <laughs> I had a wedding that I worked very hard for. I had a regular employment job, nine to five, with regular tech pay in my career. I wasn't a traveler yet. I was working overtime for two years to save up for a wedding. A wedding that the guests ruined for us. Yes, the guests. There was a brawl. My family and her family got physically into it. The cops came and ended our wedding early. I never got a sorry from any of them. A wedding that big with 150 guests, is, it's really a show. It's more so for the guests than for you and your wife. It's stupid. That's what I learned from it. So if I ever were to marry again, it's only going to be me and my partner. It's going to be romantic. It's going to be intimate. And we're not trying to impress anybody else. So I'm with y'all on this. Our circle, yeah, our circle's not huge. So. so I'm not about to go and um, spend my money on everybody else because really a wedding is is not really for you it's mm -hmm. for everybody else mm -hmm. so now that i've really deeped it and i thought about it if we were to do a wedding it'd be somewhere tropical on the beach absolutely um i would like to do a wedding yeah i would like to eventually do a wedding yeah i'm not saying like we're not gonna do one but it's just definitely not on the forefront right now it's not something that we are planning mm -hmm. in the moment but i think I think a wedding to like celebrate one of our anniversaries, you know what I'm saying, would be would be fire. That would be cute. Again, yeah. Definitely small. Like definitely a five year anniversary intimate. wedding would be Just nice. Just to have that experience, that experience would be beautiful. I would love to see you in a wedding dress, like yes. a, a, a wedding dress. Like I, I well, would, it wouldn't be your typical love, wedding dress. I'll tell yeah, you that. Of course. <laughs> Gotta show that body. <laughs> but I, I would like to experience that. But yeah. it's just it's not it's not something pressing. You know what I mean? Like. Like baby said, we love the way we got married. You know what I mean? That's that's what we decided to do. We went to a courthouse. We got married within two and a half months of knowing each other. And, and now we we're almost five years. It. And we almost five years. And, and our love <laughs> that's is strong. You see people that put on these big, extravagant, fancy weddings and they don't make it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I worry for y'all though. Y'all y'all talking about these five years. Now there was two other couples on YouTube that were together for five years. That was Lauren and Steph and the other two lesbian couple. I forgot, but they were the one that, uh, that also has a child. So they were both together for five years. I was with my wife for five years. We all ended <laughs> after five. If y'all can make it to six years, it might last. Like, it's just, just for show. It literally is yeah. for show. And it we, doesn't it doesn't scream us and it doesn't scream our authentic self. Exactly. And we not we not in the business of really putting on a show for nobody. Like the things that we do are truly because we wanna do it and we wanna experience it. So at the moment it's up in the air. We don't really know. But that could change in a year. That could change in two years. And mm -hmm. if it changes then we'll roll with it. But like we just not traditional at all <laughs> and we're so far from we're so far and from that's what we just do our thing that's just how we rock i like you know it me? i love that yeah all right next question how do you quit a bad job <laughs> random ass question damn i think you should answer this that's one. a good one honestly my and i i quit my job but my job wasn't a bad job mm. right my job was a great job for its time, but I outgrew it and I wanted more. I wanted I wanted more for myself, you know what I mean? I wanted to control my time. I wanted to do something that I lo really loved and enjoyed. And um, for me, I had to walk away and just take a leap of faith. Like all of the ducks weren't in a row. And, I, and that's what I thought. I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't retire from my nine to five until like everything was perfect, but there's no perfect moment. If you have that desire inside of you That's right. to, to walk away and do something else, do you it. kind of have to follow that. Take you that follow risk. That with a leap of faith. And you then have you obviously to. obviously have to have something else in place. So if you don't already have something else brewing on the side, then you need to go find out Prepare. whether that's another job for you. or if you Don't get me wrong. There's been times where I just would get so upset with whatever the situation may be, a toxic work environment. You know how many times I would have loved to just say, fuck all of you and just quit right on the spot? That would be so nice. But as an adult, you got expenses, you got bills to pay, you can't stop that income. So I always put those two weeks. 
But the drastic career change that I did was I stayed in the career fields that I've always been in for 14 years, but this time I became a traveler. I took the risk of leaving the hospital that I was working at for eight years, left the house that I bought and decided to rent it out to tenants, gave my car to my parents, bought a new car, adding on to a whole new car note, left my family behind and started traveling in my field where I have no family, no friends anywhere around me. And it was the best risk I've ever taken in my whole entire life. It actually took me out of depression. That's the best decision I've ever made. And I'm not saying that every leap you take is gonna be a positive one. You don't know that, but it will lead to it. There ain't nothing wrong with challenging yourselves. Challenge yourself. You kind of do your own thing. Then when you get off from work, you should be if you want, If you want something to change, you have to change it. You have to redirect your path. The own thing. That's what we were doing. When yeah. I would get off of work, we were working on YouTube. So I think have some sort of motion somewhere else before you leave. And then once that starts brewing, like you'll know, you'll know, you'll be you'll guided. Know you'll time. know when it's time to really walk away and take that leap of faith. But I would say line things up the best way that you can, um, but make a plan. And like as you're making that plan, like fuck all the distractions. Focus on that plan. You get off from work. Focus on bettering yourself, focus on increasing, like f learning new skills, focus on your personal development, read books, like invest your extra time and energy into yourself and don't give your time and energy to other things, too many of other things. And I think that is a really good like game plan if you're trying to get out of your current situation. Mm. But nothing changes if nothing changes. Good so advice. You can't just like, I hate my job, sit there, complain, 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 right. complain. And especially I hate hearing that shit. Every hospital I go to, there's always those employees that's always bitching. You know why I hate it so much? Because it reminded me of myself at that time. But everyone who changed their lives for the better don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you motherfuckers complain every single day I come into work. Change your life if you hate it that bad. And I don't want to hear excuses. I'm always hearing excuses of, well, I have kids. I have too many expenses. I, I can't take those risks. Yes, you can. Especially if you're a parent. You have more reason to take risks and to better your situation. I only did it for myself. <laughs> so I had to have self-motivation. But you have other motivations like your children. To change. You got to change. Mm. Got to move your feet. Love it. Good job, girl. Good, good answer. No, it's right here, like sleeping on the, the avocado. <laughs> so okay. Do you do you see yourself staying in Miami? You in mm. Miami too? Goddamn, everybody's in Miami. Shannon and uh, Amanda are in Miami too. Don't know. Like we just, we just, we go with how we go with the flow. Like we go. There's so much of the world to see and to. To be planted some one place is just obviously not something that's been a part of our lives. We have moved around a lot. <laughs> and while we while we love Miami and we're enjoying being here, I don't I don't know if we would just be in one place forever. Like I don't think that's that's gonna be a thing for us. So yeah. That's one thing I stopped doing is stop planning too far ahead. You know, a question that a lot of people have is what is your plan in the next five years? Bitch, I don't have one. I have a plan for this year, and that's as far as I'm gonna go. Because it doesn't matter how, how much you plan, obstacles will be part of your path, and it might redirect you to a different place. So I stopped living for the future and started living for the present. We only have little control of where our life goes. So I'm living life at the moment. You know, we're gonna be here and, and, and enjoy it, until it's, it's no longer serving us, basically. Yeah. And when, when and if that day comes, we will not hesitate to be moving on to something Out of here. <laughs> Facts. That's what we do. If yeah. we're not feeling it, we pack up and go. Somebody asked that before, like, why do you guys always move so much? Like, staying in one place is not it. You don't learn like, much, you, neither. You, you outgrow your environment. Yes. It's just like when people stay in their hometowns, you can't stay in your hometown and grow. Yes. That's, it's not possible. It's yeah. like I promise you that shit is real. It's true. Because once I left my small circle, in the first few months of traveling, I learned so much more and so much quicker. From a baby to the age of 30, my growth was like a fucking turtle. I was very ignorant to many things, many topics, 
many people, many states, many countries, many regions, ignorant to life. But the past few years that I started traveling, girl, I grew so much as a person, it's crazy. I'm no longer stuck in this small mentality of what my small circle provided for me growing up. I suggest and advise everybody to travel. Vicious cycle. Yeah, you just in that, you get stuck in a, a, a comfort zone and we just don't like to be comfortable. We don't like to feel comfortable. We don't, we're not looking for comfort. Like we're looking for like, we like to feel uncomfortable. We like to feel uncomfortable <laughs> so that way we, it pushes us to, to that next like stage, that next level. So wherever, I don't know about that one, mm -hmm. but we head now and we gonna enjoy it while we head and we gonna make our mark in this city while we head. That's basically what we doing now. What would you guys be doing if you weren't doing YouTube? Ooh. I feel like we get this question so much. I'm gonna let you go first. I feel like I don't actually know. <laughs> What I'd be doing. I'd probably be a housewife. <laughs> I love that. Because I was a housewife. I was to say, you were a housewife. You left your job. I remember that. That's mm -hmm. What I was doing. Like, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to lift a finger. Yeah. I followed them when they had a very small sub count, so I remember those times. Um, obviously, you know, I did my wifey duties, but yeah, I think I'd probably just be a housewife. Mm. And you taught me, no, like, go get it, go get it. Yeah. You lit that fire under me, you know? Right. And then you came with Let's Do YouTube, and then, you know, everything just went how it went. But I don't I don't see myself doing anything other than YouTube. Well, I do. Like, I see myself doing other things outside of YouTube, but I love YouTube, and YouTube will always be, you know, a thing. A part of it. So. Yeah. Me, if I wasn't doing YouTube, I think right now, like again, with like what baby said, like YouTube is just YouTube is just a really important part of our foundation. Like even if we wasn't doing YouTube together, like you guys know, I've been working on trying to get my channel off the ground and having okay. Haven't been able to I didn't know about it, yet. but I don't know if I wasn't doing YouTube, I would probably be doing some sort of like life coaching or some sort of yeah. I think I would just be like some sort of like life coach. Or you, I feel like you do something like athletic. Yeah, fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something, something along those lines. But we doing YouTube. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's what we're doing okay. right now. That's what, that's what it is. Do you think you'd be exactly who you are now without each other? No. Absolutely not. I hope not. No. I don't know what my life would be. Right? I hope not because every person you come across is supposed to help you change, whether that's negative or positive. But you're supposed to learn from every person that crosses paths with you. So, good. Me, you. Likewise. And I don't... Not to say, like, bad, like, it would be... My life would be bad, but I feel like I, you saved me just as much as I saved you. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that. Like, like, like I, I, I couldn't even fathom life without my wife. Like, I couldn't even fathom life without my wife. And she definitely saved my life in, in, in a lot of different ways that you guys don't know. I would but, like to know. Um, I like deep yeah, conversations. Let's I talk about it. I would not be the person that, that I am today with, without her. She has been the driving force behind me chasing my dreams and, and fueling that belief in myself. That I like that. She kind of just showed me. It's like I, I had it. You know what I mean? I had it, but she just came and just showed me. Like, just pushed you a little more, you know? Bro, you can do anything and you can go anywhere. <laughs> the world is your oyster. The world is your, the world is your oyster. That's something that, that baby told me. You had a great me. support and, system. Um, That's what you need. Yeah, like I can't, I can't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I, and I truly believe that we were, we were meant to meet. We were meant to be married. We're soulmates. Like this was planned way before we even came to earth. It's way deeper than soulmates at yeah. this point. Like it's 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a divine connection that no one will ever understand. Yeah, I feel like people see it, but like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll make a movie or doc one day. You guys yeah. will really get to see, see like the behind. The what scenes. you mean? I but wanna actually, know. I know. What you talking believe, about? I know that God put us together. God brought her into my life and mine into hers. Mm -hmm. And um, I I know this was always a part of the plan. So yeah. There's no me without her and her without me at this point in our lives. It's like we, 
It's Prince and Tati forever. It's oh, okay. forever. It's, it's forever. It's for everything for sure. Are you guys planning on having a child soon? Oh, baby yes, talk. Is that a question? Oh no my way. God. <laughs> no way. All I would say is we're ready. Oh, what? That is happening. What? <laughs> <laughs> For real or nah? You're joking? We're definitely ready. And um, time frame, we don't have a time frame. We know you guys want to know. From my understanding, um, from what I can remember, Prince had a child and lost the child um, very young. I don't know the backstory behind it, though. And because when I started watching, I've seen pictures in the background and on the wall, and I was wondering about it, and I saw the comments on it, and it's just, I still don't know what happened. So when I started watching and following them, they never brought it up or talked about it. But I did stop watching for a while, and so I and don't know. X, y, Z, Day, we, don't, exactly. we don't have that. I don't know if they'll ever talk know, about the it. The process with us being two women is very, very different. Mm -hmm. So, but we will tell you that we are we're ready. Like and I think that we've you know, we've had a lot of conversations with you guys about the whole baby topic, right? Yeah. And we always desired like we always knew we want kids. We want right. to have kids. We always right. knew that. But we were we were never ready. Fully ready. Like fully ready, like fully ready. Because you were career driven, we I get it. That we are ready. We have clarity on on it, and okay. we've had the conversation, and we are ready. So okay. So when does the process just, start? You know, the specifics <laughs> is just something that it's you my guys question. are obviously gonna have to stay tuned for. What? But just know that we are one thousand percent ready to become parents. Yeah, and I think okay. we're blessed to be able to make that decision. Some people don't get to make that decision when they're ready. It's like yeah. ready or not, you know what I mean? Where That's true. I feel like we're super, super blessed to be able to d decide when we're ready. Yeah. You know what I Absolutely. mean? And I think that like bringing a child into this world. There's also a downside to that. I've always wanted a child, but I decided to wait till I found my person so I thought my wife and that's when I tried to have a child is at age 30 so it was obviously more difficult to try to conceive because of my age and it didn't work out I think I decided to wait too long but I did not want to become a single parent and but look if I did have a child I would have been single parent anyways so it's, <laughs> it's like what it is huge yeah and it's Definitely. huge for us and we've had to go through so many hurdles and so many things before we could bring a child into this world. Absolutely, absolutely. And some of you guys know, not all of you, because I don't, it's not something that I speak about. Oh, often, here we go. Um, because I'm extremely, extremely protective yeah. of- um, Your story. Protective of her, especially because she's no longer here. But some of you guys know that I did lose a child. You know, my daughter passed away in 2017 at the age of four. Four years um, old. Due to cancer. Damn. And that, I think, mm. like deep down in my, <sighs> deep down in my subconscious, made me afraid of, like, wanting to have a kid. You know, because like losing a kid is, ooh, is, it, that shit got me emotional. A child's innocent, you know. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's just like I'm it's sorry painful. girl that you went painful. through that so I don't know like I, I, I always knew I wanted to have a kid with my wife um but it's just I don't know I think I was just like never all the way in on the decision because because mm -hmm. I was afraid you know what I mean because that's something that like it causes like, trauma like I feel like I would be so terrified of you if know it what happened I mean? again yeah but i think that i have i have healed you know i have healed and and there, there's nothing i want more than to 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 recreate um with the love of my life so yeah i think one of the like secrets the like secret recipes to to our marriage is that 
They want to know the, <laughs> the secret. <laughs> one of the biggest things, it's been like our number one rule for our marriage and it's not to allow any external forces to affect what we have going on. What she means is don't tell nobody shit about your relationship because yeah. nobody else needs to know. That's a yeah. fact. Like, <laughs> not family, not friends. Listen, in every relationship I've been in, in every dating situation I've been in, I'm very private. The only thing that you'll ever hear me talk about when it comes to my situationship or relationship or my partners is positive things. I will only talk to you about the good things because the bumps in the road, the roller coaster rides, the emotional shit that we're going through sometimes behind closed doors ain't none of your business. Okay, those are things that it's between us that we will fix on our own or that we will work on together. Adding people into the mix and for them to give their opinion is only going to influence your decision making and it can make your situation worse. And I'm also very protective. I'd be damned if anybody talks about my partner in a negative way. I might be thinking the same, like, yeah, yeah, she does have a little attitude. Yeah, she's a little rude. Yeah, she ain't got no manners. <laughs> I don't like to use the word bitch. I've never called my partners out of their name. But some of them had those behaviors. <laughs> but you can't say that, though. And my family also knows that, too. They know damn well they cannot say nothing negative about my relationships. So I never knew their true opinions on any of them until after things end. Then they let me know all the things they thought about. I'm like, oh, damn, I didn't know y'all thought like that. But okay. Friends, not anybody. Yeah. What happens between us stays between us. And I think that's where people really, really go wrong is because they'll have a fight with their partner and call their friend and be cussing out their partner and X, Y, and Z. And then that person's going to give their perception. I never did that. Not in that position. I would never yeah. vent like negatively about my partners. You know what I mean? And then you've got people telling you this in your ear and that in your ear that's swaying your decision. In my opinion, communication is key. Talk it out with your partner instead of venting it. To someone else but because you won't talk to your partner about it you're venting negatively about your partner to other people and now they feel something negative towards your partner now you're just creating enemies for the person that you so-called love you don't even know what you think so i think that that is the secret sauce is yeah. don't tell nobody nothing nobody, like you and 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 i know like that's just like not normal, you know what I mean? Like people vent, like people vent. Of course, you know, but, but in a healthy way. That's just not us. Like, not God. just talk yeah. shit about your partner. Like, 100%, like that's that's just not us. Like that's just, that just hasn't been us from the jump, you know what and I mean? And that's also what couples therapy can be used for too. You have um, a complete stranger who has no ties to neither of you and has professional education to be a mediator and to give you the tools to make your relationship better. That's where you and go we to. We've done a really good job at just keeping the things that we go through it's protecting. between the two yeah. of us because we're protecting exactly. our love, you know what I mean? Exactly. So like, even in the midst of an argument or a disagreement, okay. I'm with not, you know, the intentions are still pure, you know what I mean? And then obviously communication, yeah, communication. We all know that communication. Um, but I think just like no external forces, you know what I mean? And, and that, and that comes in so many different ways. Like, you know, you don't allow someone else to disrespect your partner. Mm -hmm. Don't allow someone else to speak a certain way onto your partner. And that's the thing too. Like, let's say for example, if your partner is going at it with your friend or your family member or your parent. And you know damn well your partner is in the wrong. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick by my partner's side. If my partner is disrespecting anybody that I love, I'm going to tell her to stop. But if they start disrespecting back, you know whose side I'm picking is my partner's. I'm like, okay, we're going to leave the situation. So let's go. So by doing that, I'm letting everyone know that I am sticking beside my partner. But when we get home, I'm going to tell you how wrong you were and how fucked up that was. And I do not agree with the things you said, what you did, none of it. But I'm not going to make my partner look like a fool in front of people. You defend your partner when your partner's not around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just hold, you just exactly. really hold it down for the person that you're with. Exactly. That's the person you say you love. Exactly. It's shown through your actions, even in the midst of difficult conversations and high emotions and okay. I think that's just kind of how we how we roll you know what I'm saying we keep it we just keep it real tight like we keep the love present yep. at all times yeah it's just that pure, pure yeah you have to have pure like we could be arguing and I'm still gonna make you food 
Yeah. I'm still gonna take care of you. Yeah. Like I'm not just gonna go. Of and course. Just leave it <laughs> yeah. be. Be like, mature I, about I it. Still always care and love you. Yeah. And a big thing too, I'm gonna just keep it real frank for lesbians, especially. Please like, talk on it. When you arguing with your partner, don't go, don't go involving your ex. Like that's a big thing, especially what? in our community. Like don't do that. Don't do that. What you mean? What like you mean? Some of y'all need to hear that. That's a big thing. Don't don't do that. Your ex should not be involved in your current relationship. Oh, oh, oh I see. At all. At yeah. At all. So that is your. Yeah. Past. Love you guys. We love you guys so much. And we appreciate y'all for rocking with us. We on year four of this thing. And we on the road to a million. And this year is going to be big. It's going to be a big year for us. Huge. Huge. All right. That's it for today's video. I learned a lot. And if y'all want to watch the whole video, go to their channel and check it out. I can't do no hour video now because I do talk a lot. I apologize. See y'all next video. Peace.